Hello again, everybody. It's Scott Casper, Takedown Media. Our coverage of the sport continues. Today we head to Blacksburg, Virginia, the home of the mighty Hokies. A Nike hot seat special guest today, their new head coach, is Tony Roby. Tony, good morning. How are you? I'm doing great, Scott. How are you doing? Good. It was special on March 21st, just two days ago, when you were promoted officially to the head wrestling coach at Virginia Tech, where you have spent the last, what, 11 years? 11 years, yeah. 11 years, and you finally get that honor to be the man taking over a program from uh, the departed Kevin Dresser, a guy you've known so well and and obviously learned from. Uh, you now have an opportunity to make your mark. Congratulations on being that guy. Uh, also, congratulations on leading the team to yet another ACC championship. Thank you. Yeah, um, our guys did a really good job down the stretch. Not just our guys, but I think our entire staff uh, – our support staff, everybody involved uh, with Virginia Tech Wrestling, uh, the last month of the season kind of kept this thing together, kept it rolling the right way, and certainly had a great ACC tournament with a uh, with a first place finish, uh, with six champions, seven guys in the finals. So we couldn't ask for a whole lot more at the ACCs, NCAA's. Uh, you know, we felt pretty good about it, but I think we also, there was some stuff we didn't feel good about too. We left a lot out there and, uh, probably could have had a little bit better finish, but sixth place and five all Americans, uh, is, is certainly still, uh, pretty good. And there's a lot to celebrate there. You've been serving as an associate head coach since joining the Hokies in 2006. Um, how will your duties change now that, uh, you've removed the interim tag and, and you are officially that guy, the decisions rest on your shoulders. Yeah, I think the job changes. There's really uh, the whole description and what you do on a daily basis. Your responsibilities change. Not to mention, like you said, that you're in charge. You're you got to delegate. You have to manage. So um, it's a role that I'm excited to be in. It's a role that, quite frankly, I was ready for. Uh, being an assistant coach was something that uh, you know, I, I not that I didn't enjoy it, but I, I just felt like I was ready for this role and ready for a new challenge uh, in my career. So. Um, being here the last 11 years, I've learned a lot uh, in terms of, you know, what you have to do and what responsibilities you have to take on as a head coach. And uh, I think I'm ready for them and I'm ready to tackle it. You know, I know part of your duties are recruiting, forming those relationships with guys that meet uh, the requirements that, that you set forward, both academically and weight wise, the kind of guys you want on your team that become part of the family. And that's really been the secret of Virginia Tech. Uh, you know, the guys I've, I've known over the years, the Joey Dances, the Ty Walls, as they talk about that closeness. And uh, that's some kind of special magic that needs to happen, but it comes from the top down, doesn't it? Yeah, you know, we're fortunate here. We've got tremendous leadership within our team. Uh, the senior leadership this year was fantastic, starting with Ty Walls, uh, just an incredible individual, incredible human being, uh, was a big part of our success and in helping our program take the jump from where we were to where we are now. Uh, in addition to him, Joey Dan, Sal Mastriani, David Bergita, um, a lot of kids contributed to the culture, um, you know, and it kind of trickled down to the, the lower classes. And it, when you have a culture like that and you have people like that and uh, everybody's buying into what it takes to be successful, it, it certainly makes your job a lot more fun. So um, we're excited about you know, where we're at and the direction of the program and just the atmosphere and the environment within inside of our program right now. I've known you as a, uh, a strong student athlete. I've known you as a strong coach. This is not your first uh, coaching position. No, we go back a ways where it started. And, uh, you know, you've, you've been laying this road, uh, and, and, and working on a roadmap of your own for your career. And this may be the career stop for you. This, you know, Blacksburg may be your home for the rest of your career. Are you prepared for that? Absolutely. I've been here for 11 years. Uh, I've been in coaching for 19 years. So uh, this has definitely become home to me and my family. We love this part of the country. We love living here. Um, I've got a son that's a junior in high school. He's known really no other home in terms of being in school and as a school-aged uh, student than, than this part of the country. So um, that sounds great to me. I, I love Virginia Tech, and uh, there's a lot of resources here, and we're excited about the future. You and Jennifer actually live in Christianburg, is that correct? We do, yes, okay. which is about eight miles away. And Nate, Luke, and Jake are the boys, and uh, i got to believe they're awfully proud of you and what you've been able to accomplish, and certainly when being elevated to the head coaching position of the Hokies, i got to believe uh, there was a lot of joy at home that, that particular day. 
I think so. I think a lot of relief, a lot of joy. Um, you know, they, they're they're deeply vested into this, just like I am. You know, my wife is uh, a big part of what I do in our family unit, and uh, yeah, it was a, it was a great moment for our entire family. So, as a wrestler, you also have a degree in criminal justice, and <laughs> you got that at Edinburgh wrestling for Bruce Baumgartner. Um, I got I'm just as an observation. I've never thought uh, you would be a guy I would want to mess with. Uh, specifically because of the criminal justice, but you were also an outstanding wrestler. You'd, you'd be a smart guy. <laughs> Tony Roby, our guest in the Nike hot seat today, as we reflect back on his career and project forward, you were, what, a owner of 126-23 and 23 record on the collegiate mat, a world-class wrestler, two-time All-American, two-time captain for Bruce's team at Edinburgh. Um, do you still communicate with Bruce? Yeah, occasionally. Um, you know, I talk to Bruce a couple times a year. Obviously, when I see him, I'm still very close with Tim Flynn, who's the head wrestling coach now at Edinburgh, was the assistant while I was there, um, is, a, is a great friend of mine. And, uh, you know, we vacation together, talk regularly. But I, I have very strong ties to Edinburgh, um, very fond memories of my experience there. And, uh, you know, for me, I, I wasn't a blue chip recruit coming out of high school. I never won a state championship. And, uh, Really was only recruited by a few Division One wrestling schools. Edinburgh was about 20 minutes down the road from Erie, Pennsylvania, where I grew up. And um, to be quite honest, I tell people this all the time. I, I got pretty lucky to end up at Edinburgh, just in terms of the people uh, that were there at the time to help me achieve my goals. So um, I grew a lot as as a person, certainly as a wrestler. And um, you know, I'm very fortunate and very thankful for my time at Edinburgh. When in Michigan, as a coach there, the Wolverines' top assistant, you were part of uh, that recruiting effort that had three top ten classes, including the number two ranked class in 2004. One guy I want to ask you about in particular, Ryan Bertine. Uh, that young man I was fortunate enough to interview several times, but I remember his 2003 NCAA championship run. What can you tell me in reflecting back on Ryan Bertine? Ryan was, uh, gosh, man, that's a long time ago, but a guy that I had a great, great relationship with, um, just a tremendous worker, both on the mat, in the classroom, you know, he, he, he was, he was a perfectionist for sure. Um, but you know, he, he was a gamer too. He was a guy that during the season, he might stumble a couple times, but he did his re best wrestling at the NCAA tournament and rose to that occasion, uh, multiple times as a four-time All-American two-time NCAA champion, uh, you know, product of Lakewood St. Edward High School in Cleveland. Uh, just just a tremendous competitor, a great human being, uh, just a kid that was tough as hell, and it showed when he stepped out there and he wrestled. I'm not sure what he's doing these days, but uh, Ryan had an immediate impact at, at Michigan because he was the first national champion. 18 years of math serves me, and uh, that's the kind of thing that helped propel that program to where it is today. It's uh, a a teetering dangerous, dangerously close to the edge of, of uh, tremendous success. We'll look for it in the future. going to be great competition on the mats. We're talking with Tony Roby this morning. It was just a few days ago where he was awarded the head coaching position after proving out years of hard work will pay off i go back to your years at binghamton university taking over a program that had previously been discontinued by lois de Fleur, uh because of and i'm using air quotes here tony budget constraints uh instead of uh rallying behind something and figuring it out she chose to get rid of it uh, you were there at the helm of a program that was in desperate need of strong leadership, and you provided it. Can you talk to us about the unique uh, opportunity you had at Binghamton to help revive a program in, a, in what was then a declining economy of wrestling? Yeah, I mean, it was definitely a unique situation. Uh, they had dropped the program, I think, 2003 or 2000. I think it was 2003 or 2004, uh, they had a year off where there was no wrestling. All the kids uh, had transferred and left uh, Binghamton, and then they reinstated the program uh, the following year. I was hired in, I think, January of 2005 and uh, was put in a tough situation. We had to field a team for the 05 06 season. So, um, you know, that was obviously very difficult to do, but uh, we were able to recruit some, some pretty good student athletes who ended up developing into being pretty darn good. Josh Patterson, the first All American that Binghamton had. But it was a great experience for me just to, uh, you know, 
uh, getting that role of leadership and being the head coach and understanding all that goes with it. And uh, it would definitely help prepare me for where I am today. And it also was a school that was put in the national limelight. I remember uh, the challenges that uh, you were going through, and, and we did our best to try to keep it in the limelight because, quite frankly, the squeaky wheel gets the oil. Uh, we're talking with uh, head coach of Virginia Tech, Tony Roby. He was awarded that uh, that title and the job just a couple days ago. And and I got I got to tell you, you know, director of athletics, your boss, Whit Babcock, uh, picked a good guy. Picked a guy that's ready. Is an inter- integral part of it. I want to ask you about your relationship uh, on the East Coast specifically uh, in recruiting. Um, you were at Vir- Virginia as well, if I re- if I recall. Am I correct on that? No, I, I was never at Virginia. Okay, where where does the West I'm, Virginia? I, I coached at West Virginia West for Virginia. a year, a long, you. long time Thank ago. Thank you. So a long, long time ago, but th- that still was the you know laying the groundwork for a successful uh, um, number of relationships on the East Coast, allowing you that opportunity to continue to recruit the area, and then spending even that you know eleven more years at, at Virginia Tech. I got to believe you're poised for uh, continued greatness there. What are your thoughts on continuing to recruit the Eastern Seaboard and then even go deeper into the continent? Well, I, I can promise you this: we're going to work real hard. Um, to get that done and continue the uh, what we built here and the standard that we've set here at Virginia Tech. Obviously, you know, geographically, we're in a pretty good spot uh, with proximity to Pennsylvania, Ohio, New Jersey, the whole Eastern Seaboard. But Virginia Tech's a school that you can recruit nationally at, especially with our recent success. So, uh, although they, those may be the areas that we we recruit heavily. We also want to get the very best kids in the state of Virginia, and we feel like we've done a really good job of that uh, throughout the last several years. Um, you know, but we'll go nationally, and we'll re- go wherever we need to go to get kids that fit what we're looking for, kids that fit into our program, and have the kind of uh, work ethic and character that uh, that we want. Speaking of work ethic and character, I got to ask you about Ty Walls. Let's go off book here. Ty Walls is a young man I've grown uh, fond of. Uh, I've grown to know him quite well. A uh, fun guy to be around. I like the whole name, um, the whole family. I've talked to his grandmother, for goodness sakes, uh, Mima. And <laughs> I just think that that's the kind of guy. I mean, if you're going to go out, you go out the way you go out. That's fine. But there's a there's a bright future for Ty in a lot of different areas. He wants to be an actor. I know that. And uh, how was he How was he to coach? He was... Uh... Just uh, he, he's a coach's dream, uh, to be honest with you. He he does uh, whatever you ask him to do and more. He, he comes to practice every day with a fantastic attitude. His work ethic is off the charts. Commitment to the sport of wrestling in terms of his diet, his nutrition, uh, the way he lives his life socially. Uh, he left it all out there and, and he did everything in his power to achieve his goal. So at the end of his career, he can look back and feel good about what happened. Hang on a second, Scott. Let me click that phone off. Tony Roby, our guest, he's uh, uh, opting to to go silent on his ringtone for his cell phone. We appreciate that. that. Uh, Tony, I I must ask you about Joey Dance, too, because uh, if there was a face uh, besides Ty Walls that I would always think about when I thought about Virginia Tech, I'd be thinking about Joey Dance. Yeah, no question. Joey was a he's a fan favorite for sure. Uh, had a great career, two time All American here. Had some unbelievable wins throughout the course of his career. Uh, you know, a guy that was tremendously and is tremendously talented uh, athlete was a lot of fun to watch uh, wrestle. He was a guy that could do some things athletically that not a lot of people can do. So Joey was a big part of it too, man. He was. He's a Christiansburg guy from Christiansburg High School. So locally here, uh, he's got a huge following. And, uh, you know, Joey's a great kid, and he's a guy we hope to keep around. We had, a tr- uh, and still do, have a tremendous amount of uh, respect. He was part of that All About Us, hashtag All About Us, uh, when Dresser announced his uh, retirement from the program. Uh, you rallied this team uh, in, in a way I, I don't think I've ever seen um done it was it was very unique in that we're here we're strong we're number four in the country you had a strong ncaa finish based on that emotion i think based on talent as well but sixth place finish at the 2017 championships just a week and a half ago in st louis can you reflect back on the year it's been an emotional roller coaster 
Yeah, you know, it's been a tough. I think every year is a tough year. I mean, obviously, wrestling is a really long season, so you're going to have some ups and downs throughout the course of the season. Uh, we we had way more ups than we did downs for sure, but uh, you, you got to feel good about it. Looking back, I mean, we lost one dual meet to Missouri. had had a lot of good dual meet wins. We were. Uh, the ACC dual meet champions were the ACC tournament champions. Uh, and like I said, five All-Americans at the NCAA tournament, sixth place finish. So um, it, it, it's good. I think any coach would tell you, I guess, unless you win the Nationals, that there's still more to, to achieve. And there's you're, you're always disappointed for a few of the guys that didn't get done what they wanted to get done. So, um, you know, you, you kind of leave that tournament, the NCAAs, with mixed emotions. But I think looking back on the entire season and what we were able to accomplish as a team and, and how we did it uh, is certainly something that we feel good about. There has been some uh, mm, public conversation uh, about the a few times that uh, uh, you were slated to, when I say you, Virginia Tech was slated to wrestle uh, the University of Iowa, and the University of Iowa did not take that opportunity. Um, will Virginia Tech uh, welcome an opportunity to wrestle uh, the University of Iowa anytime in the future? If Coach Brands wants to to wrestle us, have him reach out to me. I mean, it's certainly something that we would uh, we would love to talk about. You'd take that phone call? Sure. Absolutely. All right. So it's out there. <laughs> We're not stirring the pot here. I'm just wondering. <laughs> <laughs> hey, listen, I'll take a phone call from Kale, from anybody who wants to wrestle us. We'll, we want to wrestle the best teams in the country, um, you know, and we want to make sure that we're prepared for the NCAA championships. And the only way you can really do that is to wrestle the best teams and the best athletes in the country. And, you know, hopefully you get exposed a little bit uh, during the season and then you can come back and fix some things and make sure you're prepared at the end because that's really what counts. Tony, I've got to ask you, and I forgot to ask this as a follow-up, uh, Ty Walls departs. Who takes over for the uh, as the heavyweight for Virginia Tech? Well, we've got a young man by the name of Andrew Dunn, wrestled at Bethlehem Catholic High School in Pennsylvania, coming off a redshirt season, uh, had had a fair amount of success as a redshirt, so he's got big shoes to fill. Uh, he knows that. He's aware of that, but uh, he's a talented young guy. I'm lo I'm looking forward to many more conversations with you, Tony. I've been been a fan of yours for a long, long time, and uh, this is an excellent fit. And by God, the Virginia Tech faithful are lucky indeed to have Tony Roby lead the Hokies. I appreciate you taking the time to join us today on Takedown in the Nike Hot Seat. I hope you had a good time. Thanks, Scott. Take care.